A couple of months ago, you and I had a conversation about design, color, and killers. Today, I would like to enter into evidence Exhibit A, one of the color combinations we built, emerald green and saddle leather interior. Now, for the life of me, people, I do not know why Mercedes even offers this thing in silver with a light gray interior. It is blah. I mean, Germany is the country of purity laws for beer. Why the hell can't they have purity laws for beautiful cars like this? Now, further evidence. The car I had before this was a Ferrari, people. Take a wild guess. Which one got more attention? Sixty-three, sixty-five. What's the big deal about one number? Four extra cylinders. That is a 12-cylinder engine. And we really need to break this into this specific 12-cylinder and then the natural traits and tech of 12-cylinder engines. This one is a 6-liter, six 60-degree V12. It is hand-built by AMG, in this case by Sascha Betelspacher. Now, I don't know if Sasha is a guy or a girl, but I would think one would have some additional bragging rights if the engine in their S65 was hand-built by a girl. Apologies in advance if Sasha, you're a dude. Let's press on. Um, here's something that's very interesting. 621 horsepower. Now, if that figure is not cartoon-esque enough for you, how about this one? 700 and 38 pound-feet of torque, comes in at 2300 RPM. Now, as a basis of comparison, the S63 coupe we drove a couple of months ago, that's a twin-turbo V8, that has only 577 horsepower and 664 pound-feet of torque. Now, it arrives at that number with four valves per cylinder. This, three valves per cylinder. Now, this one also has two turbos strapped to it, but this one, 22 pounds of boost. That's all fine and good, but how does that translate to out here on the road? Well, you and I have sorta driven this car already, the S63 Coupe, but what we have here is a heart transplant, and that heart transplant translates to a completely different character. Really, the personality of this entire car because of that engine is totally different. Now, there's a couple of reasons for that. First and foremost is the fact that it's a 12-cylinder engine. And by nature of 12-cylinder engines, they're just, there's no way to put this, they're just lazier engines. And not because they're not fast. I mean, look at race cars and Ferraris. They're plenty fast. This is plenty fast. It's just that they don't rev as high. Now, put it another way. In the last film, the S63 Coupe film, I told you that if you can afford a car like that, because this really is the top of the S-Class range, then you are indeed a killer, and you're not on other people's time, so you're not as any, really anxious to get anywhere, um, so you can kind of enjoy the journey more, be more relaxed. That's what this engine is. It's more powerful than the S63, but more relaxed. Now, if you have never driven a 12-cylinder engine, they are really something very special. And that has everything to do with the natural traits inherent in its design. Effectively, you're taking two inline six-cylinder engines and attaching them at the hip, or really the crank. And there are three major benefits for this. Chief among them is no matter who makes the engine, they are much smoother than a V6 or a V8. And here's a fun fact. Even going back to like the Packard 12 days or like the double six days, not one 12 cylinder has had a balance shaft. It hasn't needed it because you got those two banks. Um, so you save a little bit of weight there, really makes up for the extra four cylinders, not completely. Uh, but I digress. Now, second and probably the most obvious when you drive something like this is there's just a hell of a lot more torque. And that's not just a function of the number of cylinders. It picks up again from that design trait of the inherent torquiness of those two sixes put together. But you can also fiddle with the bore and the stroke. Like, for example, Aston Martin, they also have a six liter. 60 degree V12, but they're tuning for higher revs. These engines, by nature, they rev lower, uh, where Aston Martin wanted something a bit more engaging. So that has a shorter stroke. 
Now back to this example, Mercedes-Benz was looking for more torque here. So let's go back to the S63. In that, they have a wider bore, but a shorter stroke, so that engine can rev higher than this one. But this one has a more narrow bore and a longer stroke, and the entire purpose is to tune for more torque. And that's how you get to 738 pound-feet of torque. Next personality trait change thing, whatever you want to call it, is really a big one. This car, two-wheel drive. Now, if you remember the S63 Coupe, that's only on offer, at least in the US, with 4Matic. Now, me personally, I would always opt for a rear drive car, especially living in a place like this or driving on roads like these. Um, but that's me personally, and that's frankly because the front wheels, they're not trying to do two separate jobs. But in this case, there is another reason, and that's the third reason why the personality is transformed in this thing. Because you don't have 4Matic, you can have the magic that is curve control. So if you remember, we've talked about this in a couple of our S-Class films, there's the magic body control. It's like the soup of acronyms of controlling the body. I mean, this is almost what a 5,000 pound car. So there's a lot of computers that rely on two stereo cameras here, cameras all around the car, radar, and then in this case, it uses the GIS data from the navigation system to read the road and the car leans as it's going into a turn. Let me repeat that. An almost 5,000 pound car leans as it's going into turns, like a motorcycle. To me, that is incredibly cool. But now that I've driven it, it, it transforms the car in a couple of ways. Number, number one, you, you honestly feel like the car is more like 3,500 pounds because you don't really have body roll. Now granted, this suspension setup, there's a sport, there's a comfort mode, but I've been driving around this road, especially with dynamic curve control, and it just, I probably shouldn't be saying this, lawyers will probably call me, but it makes you a sharper driver. Granted, you can still do stupid things like overdrive the car and drive into a ditch there. And last but not least is the firing order. Uh, basically, the firing order on 12-cylinder engines Back to the days of the first racing 12-cylinder engine that was a Sunbeam, they were even firing orders, like this one. You're probably thinking, why the hell are you talking about firing order? Very simple. Have you ever heard a Ferrari V12 or any other V12 for that matter? They sound incredibly cool. They sound that way because of the firing order. And let me make this really simple for you. If you're trying to decide between an S63 and an S65, and it's simply on how they sound, then let me save you some time. This is the one you want because it sounds effing cool. Now let's put aside the 12 cylinder personality change and look at some of the other bits that transform the personality of this car. So in the S63, what you have there is an automated clutch. There's no torque converter there. And it's a very quick shifting transmission. It's beautifully matched to that engine. This is a torque converter seven speed transmission. So technically same amount of gears and even the shifting, the speed of the shifting is 100 milliseconds in both. But this one, the torque converter, it, it kind of mutes the performance of the transmission. Like I've tried driving it with shifting with the paddles and frankly, you go right back to sport mode. It's best to let it do the shifting for you, at least in the sport mode. As a matter of fact, even in town, I prefer driving this in sport mode rather than comfort. Uh, another thing about the transmission, this is important to note. So this car weighs, it's like 4,870 pounds. Uh, it's about 160 pounds more than uh, the S63 Coupe. And it, you would think it's all the engine, but actually it's the engine and the torque converter that's in the transmission. Because think about it, I guess Mercedes has not come up with a, uh, an automated clutch transmission that uh, can handle 738 pound feet of torque. So the weight difference is engine plus the torque converter, uh, and it also changes uh, the ratios. So it's 53 over the front wheels 
and uh, 47 over the rear wheels. Let's take stock, shall we? A twin turbo V12 engine. Night vision that uses military technology to find the heat signatures of animals and people. And then the car in turn shoots beams of light from Swarovski crystals, really, to illuminate said people and animals to the driver. If that were not enough, the car drives itself for 12 seconds. Now, that would normally fall under the heading of it's got everything and the kitchen sink. This uh, it ain't no normal situation. It doesn't have a sink, but it's got something you would find in your kitchen. You need to belt in for this. Friends, a refrigerator. Really, a refrigerator. Um, it is designed to hold uh, two champagne bottles and champagne flutes. We have American Champagne Light in there. Uh, it goes in and out of the trunk and sits between the two rear seats. You can access it from inside the car. Um, yes, it comes out so you can put the proverbial two golf clubs in there, but people, this is a four second twin turbo V12 car. You shouldn't be wasting your time on a golf course. Let me put this to you a different way. This is the AMG equivalent to dropping the mic. Me, I'm still struggling with, I'd seriously consider buying this over a British car, and you guys know me about British cars. Anyway, I wanna leave you guys with a question, and it has nothing to do with which car you would choose, but let's get back to that engine thing. Um, if you're buying a car like this, an ultra-luxury GT kind of thing, would you want the Super Duper V8 or the tried-and-true, uh, even firing order, V12? Or would you want some sort of, like, um, fancy EcoBoost V6 in a coming sports car? Uh, let us know in the comments below. And actually, don't just let us know which one, what engine you would want, but why you would want it. And you know what? For good measure, what would be the handy carrying case you would wrap that engine in? Let us know in the comments below or via our social media, Motoman TV, all one word, Motoman TV, all one word. And I'm going to leave you with this. Uh, until next time, don't you ever doubt me again about how important color is to a car.